Ever wondered how pilots manage to understand their speed in the sky? In the world of aviation, a key instrument that helps them do just that is the airspeed indicator. This nifty device measures the plane's speed relative to the surrounding air, giving pilots critical information for safe flight. But here's where it gets interesting. Have you noticed the airspeed indicator isn't just a plane dial with numbers? It's actually filled with color-coded markings. Each color represents a different flight regime. Green for normal operating range, yellow for caution range, and red for maximum and minimum safe airspeeds. Just like traffic lights, these colors guide pilots in making informed decisions, whether it's during takeoff, cruising altitude, or landing. They help maintain the aircraft's structural integrity, prevent stalls, and ensure efficient fuel consumption. So, the color-coded markings on an airspeed indicator are not just for show. They play a crucial role in safe and efficient flying. Now that we know what those colorful markings mean, let's delve deeper into each color. First up, we have the green arc. This is the normal operating range. In other words, this is the airspeed range where the aircraft is designed to operate safely under normal conditions. It's the pilot's sweet spot where the aircraft is neither too slow nor too fast. Think of it as the comfort zone for the aircraft. Moving on, we come across the yellow arc. This is the caution range. Now, we're not saying that flying in this range is necessarily dangerous, but it does require a certain level of caution. This range is typically used during smooth air conditions and with caution to avoid unexpected gusts or turbulence. In this range, the aircraft is faster than its comfort zone, and hence the pilot needs to be alert. Finally, we have the red line or the red arc. This is the never exceed speed, often referred to as VNE. As the name suggests, this is the maximum speed at which an aircraft is designed to fly. Exceeding the speed can cause structural damage and, in worst cases, can even lead to catastrophic failure. For pilots, this is a no-go zone. It's like a cliff edge you don't want to step over. But what about the white arc, you may ask? Well, this is the flap operating range. It's the range of airspeeds at which it's safe to use the aircraft's flaps. This range starts at the maximum flap extended speed, denoted by the upper limit of the white arc, and ends at the stalling speed with flaps fully extended, denoted by the lower limit of the white arc. So there you have it, the color-coded markings on the airspeed indicator. Each color provides valuable information to the pilot, helping them to understand the performance and operational safety of the aircraft. As we see, each color-coded marking on the airspeed indicator provides essential information to the pilot about the aircraft's performance and safety. But what happens if there's a blockage in the pitot tube or the static port? Well, let's delve into that. The pitot tube and static port are crucial components in an aircraft's airspeed system. They work together to provide accurate airspeed readings, which are essential for safe and efficient flight. The pitot tube measures the aircraft's dynamic pressure, which is basically the force of the wind rushing into it as the aircraft moves forward. The static port, on the other hand, measures the atmospheric pressure around the aircraft. Together, they give us the aircraft's airspeed. But imagine if something were to interfere with their function, say a blockage, a little ice, an insect nest, or even a piece of tape left over from maintenance could cause this. Such a blockage could lead to incorrect airspeed readings, making it difficult for the pilot to control the aircraft properly. A blockage in either the pitot tube or the static port can significantly affect the performance and safety of an aircraft. Imagine flying a plane when suddenly your airspeed readings go haywire. That's never a pleasant surprise, is it? And one of the possible culprits could be a blockage in the pitot tube. This small, unassuming device on the exterior of your aircraft is responsible for measuring your plane's airspeed. But what happens when it gets blocked? Well, a pitot tube blockage can have several effects. When the pitot tube is blocked, the airspeed indicator will not receive dynamic pressure information. The airspeed indicator may then show a decrease in airspeed, even if the aircraft is maintaining a steady speed or accelerating. This can be particularly hazardous during critical phases of flight like takeoff or landing, where accurate speed readings are vital. So, how can a pilot identify a pitot tube blockage? One telltale sign is if the airspeed indicator fails to increase during takeoff or shows a drastic decrease during flight. 
despite no changes in throttle settings or attitude. However, remember that other instruments like the altimeter and vertical speed indicator will still function normally. The next question is, how can one handle such a situation? Well, most modern aircraft are equipped with a pitot heat system to prevent ice from blocking the tube. If a blockage is suspected, the first step is to activate the pitot heat. However, this may not always work, especially if the blockage is due to something other than ice, like insects or dirt. In such cases, pilots are trained to rely on other instruments and their knowledge of the aircraft's performance to maintain safe flight. But remember, prevention is always better than cure. Regular maintenance checks and pre-flight inspections can help identify any potential issues with the pitot tube before they become a problem in the air. A pitot tube blockage can indeed be a serious problem, but with proper training and awareness, pilots can manage it effectively. Safe flying, everyone. Now let's talk about the other component, the static port. This little device, often overlooked, plays a crucial role in the accuracy of the aircraft's instruments. But what happens when this static port gets blocked? Well, things can get quite interesting. When the static port is blocked, it disrupts the air pressure reading inside the aircraft's instruments. This causes the altimeter, air speed indicator, and vertical speed indicator to give inaccurate readings. A blocked static port can be a tricky situation for pilots, as it can potentially lead to false readings and incorrect decision-making. Now, you might be wondering, how does a pilot know if the static port is blocked? There are several telltale signs. For instance, the altimeter will freeze at the altitude where the blockage occurred. It will no longer show any changes in altitude, regardless of how much the aircraft climbs or descends. The airspeed indicator will also act strangely. It will show a higher than actual speed when the aircraft descends and a lower than actual speed when it ascends. The vertical speed indicator will show a constant zero, indicating no climb or descent, even when the aircraft is clearly moving vertically. So, how can pilots handle a blocked static port? By using the alternate static source. This alternate source of air pressure allows the aircraft's instruments to function correctly even when the main static port is blocked. However, pilots need to be aware that readings from the alternate static source may slightly differ from the main source. It's vital to understand and anticipate these differences to maintain safe and controlled flight. In conclusion, a blocked static port can cause a number of issues from inaccurate instrument readings to potential decision-making errors. But with keen observation, a good understanding of the instruments and the correct use of the alternate static source, pilots can effectively manage these situations. So just like a blocked pitot tube, a blocked static port can create significant issues, but it's something pilots can handle with the right knowledge and skills.